So Glock 40 Spaz is an artist that's easily had one of the most impressive yet troublesome come ups in the underground to date. From getting heavily involved in the street politics of Atlanta to then having multiple run ins with the police and getting snitched on, all the way to then releasing some of the hardest underground tapes dropped over the last few years and getting a record deal from one of the biggest names in music. And then, right as he would start to get on the right path and stray away from the streets and start realizing the insane potential behind his music, he would get locked up on some extremely serious charges that, if convicted, could lead to a sentence being nearly 20 plus years long. However, even after getting into such a serious situation, his reputation, numbers, and extremely dedicated fan base is pretty much as large as it's ever been, and continues to grow almost every single day. Which ultimately leads me to the question of where did Glock 40 Spaz really start? And before we get into this video, I want to put a disclaimer that although I usually try to avoid talking about street related topics, to fully cover Glock's story, it's pretty hard to avoid, especially into the later parts of the story. But getting back on track, let's cover the first question of where did Glock really start? Born August 29th in the year 2003, Alex Quezada, also known as Glock 40 Spaz, was born on the east side of Atlanta in a small town known as Decatur. Although he would pretty much end up traveling all throughout the north, southwest, and east side of the Atlanta area, living in places such as Lithonia, Stone Mountain, Redon, and the place where our story starts being Lawrenceville, which was located in the middle of Gwinnett County on the northeast side of the Atlanta area, and is also where Glock would end up attending both elementary school and middle school. And it's also conveniently the place where Glock would end up meeting two very important people to his story, being both Goana, aka Sumo, and his other close friend known as Baby Solid, or better known at the time as Malachi Juice. And as is the case with a lot of families nowadays, Glock's father sadly wasn't really in the picture. So naturally, he would even spend a lot more time out on the streets with his friends, even joining a local crew which was named after his apartment block number and is referenced quite a lot in his early music called 1800 slash three pools, which was a group he would run around with a lot as a kid getting involved in quite a dangerous lifestyle, which led to Glock eventually getting kicked out of school multiple times throughout his early teen years. And he would even get into quite a bit of legal trouble going in and out of the juvenile detention center over in Rockdale quite a few times, even catching his first ever felony at only 15 years old. However, thankfully this cycle wouldn't really last forever because as Glock started to mature a bit more heading into the 11th grade, he would realize that he really couldn't keep going in and out of juvie for Ever with no goal in mind. And so, due to Glock having been surrounded by rap his entire life, with all of his previously mentioned close friends being artists, along with people even inside the detention center inspiring him to rap. Yeah, yeah, cause niggas was just in that bit rapping. Like, niggas would be at the goddamn <laughs> table just beating yeah. on that bitch, just rapping. And I just had came up, I just started rapping with that yeah, And I was oh. just going hard, and I'm like, I'm finna start rapping. However, he most certainly didn't start off with that signature rapid fire flow he's known for nowadays. He instead would actually start off using an auto tune based sound, which was pretty much directly influenced by one of his favorite artists at the time being D Savage. However, he would pretty quickly realize that this sound just wasn't for him. So he instead would swap his flow to something we're a little more familiar with today, and by making use of both GarageBand and a bean can with a wire attached to the end, he would then end up releasing his first ever track, which was a collab with his previously mentioned friend, Malachi Juice, that released on October 20th of 2018, and was titled as Glock and Nope. And as a first release, this track was pretty impressive and would even pick up a little bit of traction thanks to the fan base that Glock's friend Malachi or Baby Solid had developed due to working very closely with Roblox YouTuber known as Owen Silva. And I don't know what it is about ATL underground rappers and Roblox, but they just go together, I guess. Because a lot of Solid's earliest music would actually be pretty heavily promoted by the same YouTuber. It would even feature a lot of Solid's earliest music in the Roblox movies that Owen was releasing at the time. Which would inadvertently give both Solid and Glock a pretty decent head start when it came to releasing new music. Which Glock would end up taking full advantage of. Even deciding to drop out of school due to knowing it wasn't really his path. Which would allow him a lot more time to start working on the music. With Glock releasing dozens of new singles over the course of just a few months, like with tracks such as First Stay out. I popped out with the 30 put 12 on my gun. I'm in love with the trap of my killers. I won't even talk in the 12. I ain't cap or die. Which one of y'all have it smoke with us? Which one of y'all wanna toe with us? Needs a drop hug and life on the line. Niggas can't fuck with the guy cause we pullin' that yacht cause it's like your child. Cause the BBG pullin' with y'all cause you know that. All of which would be hosted on Maokai, aka Baby Solid's SoundCloud account, which would later be renamed and transformed into the official EBG Records SoundCloud page. And if you're curious, EBG, also known as Everyday Bang Gang, is an important collective slash group that consisted of nearly five different artists, most of which sadly nowadays, as we are about to go through later into this video, are locked up 
up on various different charges. Which, by the way, BL, also known as Baby Life, is similar to EBG, being that it's mostly just a name that a lot of the folks close to Glock would rep, but it had a few extra names in it, which we will talk about later. But getting back on track, due to the area that Glock was raised in, along with his close friend, Baby Solid, it wouldn't be long before the two would start allegedly repping a known as 4CH, also known as the Four Corner Hustlers, which is a that has its roots tied mainly in the Midwest and Chicago with almost little to no presence in the ATL region. However, there is still allegedly quite a few different 4CH members on the east side of Atlanta, which is likely where Glock and his friend would get put on, which is mostly thanks to an infamous member of 4CH known as Angelo Roberts, who would actually be the person to bring 4CH down to Atlanta and would even get a few tracks dedicated to his name by Glock, with tracks such as Long Live King Glo, if you think you a shooter, little nigga, come try me, I got it, a jam for no kind of body, no count. And Angelo Jr. Bitch, I'm bad gang, I don't give a fuck on no stank. Don't say it's like, hang, give a fuck what you think. Give a fuck what you think on the block with a shank. Making a lot of different references to the clique, such as the Playboy Bunny, Top Hat, Dropping Rakes. And this would also be around the same time when Malachi Juice, aka Baby Solid, would make his name change, which in itself is also a reference to the Solid Four Corner Hustler set, which they would end up repping quite a lot over the next few years. But to be honest, Glock at this point in early 2019 was only really just getting started with the music. It wouldn't really start to get his own wave until the release of his first ever tape, which released on June 16th of 2019 and was titled as Don't Get Took Off One, which featured classic tracks like Cut Like Me. 2019, I got sent to the school. I was told them glass I ain't know how to shoot. Put a pistol on, don't make his ass take a poop. Home Alone. Oh God, I was trying, baby. Hop out the mini van. Folk All of which would stream decently impressive numbers at the time, along with the tape also getting hosted by a legendary underground music page called Trap Daily, who would host this tape and also give it a pretty big boost numbers wise, alongside also releasing a bunch of different classic exclusives such as BLS Back on the south side Nick is straight but my brother got hit with that baby like said I don't ride with the fire that took away from you know the high table man I see on it put a stick on your way rah, rah, then they all go crash grab a pistol get that shit in my mouth don't nobody come around with 800 and mentally gone niggas has spat at crazy damn I really man brave big bees on a real a bait did a cap and die life many nigga won't chase if I shoot him in the leg then I bet he won't like however it wouldn't be until early 2020 at the start of the pandemic when Glock would really start to put his foot on the gas along with Glock starting to get a lot more connections in the music scene and even connect with quite a well-known ATL artist who you'll probably remember from my last video being Sofego. And although they wouldn't officially release any music together, it would give Glock's name a pretty decent boost, which would be put to good use with the release of one of Glock's first known music videos being a video for Home Alone, which released on July 9th of 2020 and would be a pretty big moment in Glock's career, with Glock linking up with some of the biggest names in the underground at the time with names such as DJ Renesi, Flu Honchos, and even Duop Kane being at the shoot for the video, which as mentioned was a pretty big deal to be getting co-signed by such established artists in the scene. And it wouldn't just stop at signs because not too long after the link, Glock would start working very closely with the previously mentioned RSG artist named Flu Honchos, where they would collab on tracks such as Twin Glocks, and and some shots, and at this point, Glock's name was really starting to hold some weight in the underground scene. With his connection to multiple different sides of the underground, it would help to get him even further connected with people like DJ Fat and also well-known RSG producers such as Two Times, Sensei ATL, and even later down the line, Al Chapo. But also around the same time, another nowadays very well-known producer, being OK, would reach out to Glock and end up producing two of his biggest tracks at the time, being both beneficial for anybody. I mean, my brother told him pick up the phone. This shit beneficial for anybody. I can get him knocked off. You huh. the gang, yeah. shots off. And also, Land of the Living. Both of which would end up putting even more eyes on Glock, which he would respond to by dropping more singles, music videos, and even doing his first ever interview, when really only ever interview, in November of 2020. And finally, with all of the hype building up, he would end up reaching out to a frequent producer of his known as Glow K, and they would end up working together and releasing a tape fully produced by Glow, which released on December 20th in the year 2020 and has arguably some of his best work to date under the name of Don't Get Took Off 2, with tracks such as Thug Life, EBG Massacre, 
and Diamondback. All of which were being received extremely well at the time and it would really set Glock up to start seeing some serious numbers. Which he would act on by putting even more effort into taking his music seriously by releasing music videos for tracks like Thug Life and Still Young Pablo. Along with releasing behind the scenes vlogs for video shoots which would kind of show people around Glock's hood over in Stone Mountain. Which is a place that Glock references a lot in his music talking about places like South Harrison Road and more infamously Crystal Lakes, also known as The Swamp. Which is actually an area just off Laney Farm Road where Glock would shoot a lot of his earliest music videos. However, not too long after Glock started really taking the music seriously, on July 2nd of 2021, he would end up getting involved in an armed carjacking of a C300 Mercedes Benz that took place in a city just north of Atlanta called Milton. Where supposedly, according to the Milton Police Department, Glock, Veli, and three other dudes who all knew the victim beforehand would end up kicking or pulling the victim out of the car, physically assaulting him, and then driving off in his Benz. Where they remained on the run for a little over four weeks until July 25th of 2021. Where Glock would be arrested at his friend's house along with a childhood friend slash baby life member mentioned earlier being Stunna. Who would apparently try to dip out of the back of the house but would eventually be caught by the police canines who would end up biting and puncturing his left leg and right arm. And although they would both be booked that same day with Glock not providing any statements to the police, his quote unquote friends on the other hand would end up going in for questioning and giving a full interview and statement talking about growing up with Glock why he was at the house. I'll, I'll just leave part of it up on the screen if you want to read all of it. And all in all, this whole situation would end up landing Glock in Fulton County Jail, also known as Wright Street, on charges of aggravated assault, armed robbery, hijacking a motor vehicle, possession of a firearm or knife, along with three different charges from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. However, even though he was going through a rough time, his team would end up coming through and releasing a third tape on his behalf, which released only four days after his booking on July 29th of 2021, which was a project fully produced by the producer mentioned earlier being two times and it was titled as two glocks and it released with classic tracks such as definition not a believer and also free sumo which is one of the most popular tracks on this tape and relates back to an EBG member mentioned earlier being Goanna, also known as Sumo. Sumo was like most people in EBG being a pretty talented artist having dropped a few tapes and even done quite a few singles with most of the artists in his circle. However, sadly on June 7th of 2021, Sumo would end up being locked up for the malice murder of a man known as Tavon Jones which according to the DCOB police department went something like this. Sumo would just simply set up a drug deal and they would end up just robbing and killing Tavon. That's it. But there are stories online that let me just be clear are pure speculation that say it went a bit differently. Some say Tavon just tried to run off from the deal and got caught. Others say Vaughn was in the car with someone else who was looking for just a random plug to rob and then just tried the wrong one. And the last narrative I've seen is that Tavon actually tried pulling a gun on Sumo but froze up and as you could tell it didn't go too well. But it's not all bad because Glock would later say that his charges have possibly been reduced to manslaughter instead of malice, which if true, could be pretty big to him eventually getting out soon. So if that man's innocent, free Sumo. But sadly, that's not the only tragic thing that would end up happening at this time because not too long after Sumo got locked up, the closest person Glock had to a little brother being a little EBG would end up getting locked up on the accidental murder of his own sister. Wilson Scott, also known as Lil EBG, was born September 11th in the year 2008, making him only 10 to 11 years old when he would first end up meeting Glock and the rest of EBG over on the north side of Atlanta and the previously mentioned city being Lawrenceville. But growing up, Lil EBG was pretty much already struggling in the schooling system, going in and out and getting kicked out multiple times out of multiple different schools, with Lil EBG getting in a lot of different fights before he even had the chance to get into high school. And that problem would only get notably worse after his dad would end up getting locked up in 2017 on sexual battery charges against a minor, which would leave Lil EBG's family pretty much isolated, with it just being him, his mom, and his sister Kyra, until he would eventually end up meeting Glock, who would quickly take notice of just how grown Lil EBG was for his age and would eventually even end up taking him under his wing. Tell me like he 12 yeah, That Lil EBG, 
man, that young nigga, bro, that's a different nigga, bro. Like, when you talk to him, like, bring him, I'm gonna let you talk to him by yourself. That's a real, like, he on some grown man shit. <laughs> on my mama, he's not no little boy. I'm treating him pretty much just like family. With Lil EBG appearing in music videos, studio sessions, and he would even start rapping after being inspired by Glock, with Lil EBG even recording his first few songs on Glock's same setup, with tracks like Ready for War. Since I be with half ass. I felt too fast in the fucking gun case. Mama told me make sure every blood not laced. Pop around, give me a shot to make sure that's great. Along with Lil EBG also featuring on Glock's previously mentioned two Glocks tape and Baby Solid's Kilo Bin Laden tape. All of which showed he had some pretty obvious inspiration from Glock, which wasn't a bad thing because being so well connected with Glock would get Lil EBG connected with an artist who had a massive buzz at the time being baby Santana. And with Tana wanting to show some love, he would end up hopping on the opening track to Lil ABG's first ever mixtape, which released on August 27th of 2021, and was titled as Could Have Been Worse, which featured tracks such as Holly and my niggas in the trap getting bricks up. First gun was Smith was for the tub. I was my niggas shocking on the fucking club. Can't fuck with us. Baby like hell. Baby like. I had told you ass once, many niggas, they can't even fuck with us. Try me, I pop on my apron. And Red Nose Clown featuring Tana. And not locked and not only would Tana hop on a feature with Lil EBG, he would also end up bringing him out on stage for his performance at the SoundCloud Next Wave Festival, where he would do an interview and would also end up recording even more new music with Tana, which would go on to be received extremely well. However, less than a month after the festival on November 21st of 2021, Lil EBG would as previously mentioned get locked up on the accidental shooting of his sister Kyra, which according to the Douglas County Police Department went like this. Lil EBG, being so young, was looking for just about any way to make bread that he could. And so, he would eventually get into building and selling quote-unquote ghost guns, which is really just a scary name for what is basically 80% of a developed firearm. Or, technically speaking, pieces of plastic that are 80% complete and therefore not legally classified as a firearm by the ATF. Which means that a lot of these quote-unquote guns can be put together typically with gun part kits that can either be bought online with a credit card or just 3D printed at home, which is perfectly legal depending on your state. And that also means that you can pretty easily with only a few tools build a fully functional lower half of a firearm that can't be traced through any serial numbers. And although you're not supposed to be able to get access to these kind of things when you're either a felon or under 21, that doesn't mean it's not possible, which is where our story starts. With Lil EBG somehow or some way getting these parts shipped to his house and then crafting and redistributing these guns to buyers. That was until two men, one of which who was later identified as Yusuf MacArthur, would end up trying to rob Lil EBG. And basically what happened was when Yusuf was supposed to hand over the money for the gun, he instead lunged at the kid, got him in a headlock, stole the gun, and then ran for the door. In which, after Lil EBG was out of the headlock and saw Yusuf heading for the door, he would then end up reaching and grabbing a spare loaded 9mm handgun and firing multiple shots in Yusuf's direction, which would sadly instead end up striking his 14-year-old sister Kyra in the right side of her chest. A few minutes later, the Douglas County Police Department received an emergency call claiming a little girl had been shot. And as panic was setting in while on the phone with the police, they realized they didn't have much time to just sit around and wait for an ambulance to come. So instead, they loaded the little girl into the back of the car and drove two minutes around the corner to the nearest Marathon gas station, which is when Lil EBG would get out of the car, pull his sister out onto the pavement, and start begging and crying for anyone around him to help. But it was far too late. The police arrived only five minutes later and loaded her into the ambulance where Kyra, at only 14 years old, would end up passing away on her way to the hospital. And Lil EBG, while still in obvious shock, admitted to shooting his sister and would end up later being charged with a felony murder, and would also be getting tried as an adult due to the laws in Georgia. Although, over the last week or so of me making this video, it has actually been confirmed that Lil EBG has had his murder charges dropped, and will only be serving a little under two more years to which he will remain on probation for the remainder of his sentence. But that's not all, because Lil EBG's mom would also end up being charged with multiple different firearms charges, possession of a controlled substance, and obviously, second degree child cruelty. Along with the person who robbed Lil EBG, Yusuf, thankfully being charged with robbery by snatching, and also murder since the robbery he committed would end up leading to the accidental murder of Kyra Scott. And it also just goes without saying, but long live Kyra and free Lil EBG. And while all of what I just mentioned was happening, Glock would still be in Fulton County Jail awaiting trial for his previously mentioned charges. That was until he would end up running into an old friend of his while inside jail, being a man known as Jew Glizzy. 
who by the way is a really quick side note was in with Glock at the time for multiple armed robberies, aggravated assaults, prison escapes, and even the 2019 of a 54 year old woman which he did in broad daylight after only being out on bond for a few hours, which he would later be convicted and sentenced for until his eventual release date of 2046. And look, I try to just give backgrounds on artists on this channel, but Glock shouting this guy out as much as he does in his music is just insane to me. I get people will say they're all criminals so who cares, but if you're being even like slightly realistic, there is a big drastic difference in mindsets between street crimes and like whatever the hell this motherfucker got going on. But nonetheless, Jew Glizzy would be the man that would allegedly put Glock onto a he's quite well known for rapping nowadays being GF, also known as Goodfellas. This clique is located in the 9th and 10th ward of Atlanta, but it's most well known as a prison that was originally created in the exact place where Glock was awaiting trial, being Fulton County Jail, aka Rice Street. And due to Glock already having connections with the previously mentioned GF member, Juke Glizzy, he would end up dropping for CH and begin tying his image very closely to GF, getting a full length tattoo across his chest and referencing the group in his music pretty damn heavily, with names like Mob, 7 6, Woe, Third World, and 10 Letters all appearing in the music and being different names or closely tied to GF. And yes, for all the TikTokians, this is the same 7 6 that Baby Kia disses and gets you. <laughs> However, just to be clear, a lot of the disses that happen are directed towards the GFs or hard bodies on the west side near Adamsville, and it doesn't directly have too much to do with Glock. He likely, like most GF members, only really gets involved when he's inside jail, which thankfully wouldn't be for too much longer. Because on January 12th of 2022, Glock would end up getting bonded out of jail and would hit the ground running. With Glock coming fresh out of jail and having a lot to say, he would go on to release arguably some of his best and deepest work yet. With Glock talking about a lot of the real life situations we've already talked about, such as the whole little ABG situation, grieving Kyra, talking about Sumo, Satan, and even early pieces of his life, which he would even do on one of my personal favorite Glock tracks, titled We Never Went. And right around the same time, Glock would also end up getting in contact with a legendary producer who would go on to produce some of his biggest tracks to date, being OK. And they would start the year off with some heat, releasing tracks like Goodfellas. All you need. And two love to the mob. Ever since I was little, I wanna grow up be a vampire. Ten niggas out they got no more fire. No Illuminati, I just wanna see out of out which would only be the beginning of what would go on to be Glock's biggest year yet, with Glock even hosting Duop Kane's two-track EP titled Free Lil EBG, which would receive big support from Glock's fanbase along with yet again even more singles, with tracks like Virgo City, Shane Battier, and even my 2022 single of the year being I choose violence. I'm on the east side of my main vibe, my main thing. I got my blick hanging on my pack and let my trigger hang. I get a stick on me when I'm wagging, nigga, catch a flame. And not only was Glock releasing a crazy amount of singles, but he would also end up releasing a full 13 track collab tape with his close friend, Baby Solid, that was fully hosted by DJ Renacy and was titled as Gone Mad, which featured tracks such as BL4L. You ain't no street nigga, heard you told on your game. We got some traffic, we snatching the chain. We got that special, them boy when it's safe. Leonardo da Vinci. No BL4L got my time. I don't want to recruit so I nigga switch sides. Hey, but I know some nigga bang for this. And Biggest Dawn. Mm. Which would all be quickly followed up by his first full release of the year, which released on April 2nd of 2022 and was titled as Baby Woe, which came in at just over 20 tracks long and featured easily some of Glock's cleanest sounds up until that point, with tracks like Wish Em Well, Let Me Be Your Plug, and Thoughts While Incarcerated. Which would be followed up only a month later by a full length plug and B project that was fully hosted by underground legend DJ Fat and was titled as Spaz and B, which featured tracks such as the previously mentioned Von Don't Matter, Sick as Fuck, and Spring Fling. Me, I ain't hang with no fake gangsta, I ain't even move like that. Huh, how you get so 
And this project would do a really good job of mainly showing off Glock's versatility. And it would also end up exposing him to a different side of the underground with Glock slowly drifting away from that ATL underground trap scene and transitioning into having a wider reach into the newer generation of underground music. However, his growth wouldn't really come until he ended up quitting a dead-end job that he was working at the time after one of his close friends told him that if he really put his all into the music, he could take it to the next level, which is exactly what he did. With Glock quitting his job and in turn fully devoting his attention to the music, and it's safe to say that it would most definitely pay off. With Glock filming tons of music videos, vlogs, and even performing at his first ever show in Atlanta, which was then followed up by arguably one of the greatest stretches of singles in Glock's whole career, with tracks like I'm in a band. Remember me? Don't worry about my business, I handle it. I took a watch off the avalanche. I take his ass off on giving it. And a personal favorite of mine being one more. Which was sadly released after Glock's soon-to-be baby mama would end up having a miscarriage. And to be honest with you, with all the pain and effort that Glock was putting into these songs, he just on he just couldn't miss. And the craziest part, this is only three of the nearly 50 plus different singles that Glock released all within the span of just a few months. With Glock still primarily working with EBG and BL members such as Veli, Baby Solid, and he would also start to work with newer members such as both Hellboy and a personal favorite of mine being Demon K, aka DK, who he would arguably give some of his best features to, such as Intent to Kill, Gunshot, and obviously 20k. Although, sadly, due to DK having unconfirmed snitching allegations spring up from his past relating to when he was wrongfully shot, he would sadly end up being unofficially let go from BL. Although, just to be clear, he is still on good terms with pretty much everyone at EBG. Which, speaking of, he would also around this time even start to work with artists outside of his scene who were popping at the time. Working with people like Young Chris, Cash Dami, and even Lil Tracy. With Glock being willing to work with almost any artist from any scene if it was going to expose him to a new audience. With a lot of these tracks, both new and old starting to get a very noticeable buzz from everyone's favorite app being TikTok, which for better or for worse would pretty much end up changing Glock's career over the span of just a few months. With more popular tracks such as Free Sumo, Be Right Back, Brutal Honesty, and obviously Badman all doing just insane numbers over on TikTok, which would be followed up by one of his biggest and most polished releases yet, which released on August 12th of 2022, being titled as Don't Get Took Off 3. And this project would be received extremely well with tracks such as Come Catch Me, What up, pain, eh, nigga? Tryna go catch me a nigga at lay, lay in Trey Hart, nigga. Muzzle. Nigga, not stunning that shit that you tell me. Hey, can't Trey Hart in the street, can't nigga flip on. Whoop count with G. Thug. And I slay bitches. Pain on no nigga, we went to the tiger hunt, take the get scraped. Big ass Draco, we made it up, Trey nigga run for their life. And this is really one of Glock's first projects where it felt like you could definitely feel the increases in quality with both the production and the engineering. Most of which was thanks to the previously mentioned producer, Al Chapo, who would end up pretty much living in the studio along with Glock, helping him to record countless different tracks that would help him build up a pretty solid backlog of music. Which sadly, as you probably could have guessed, would end up being put to use due to Glock being arrested only one day after his birthday on August 30th of 2022 on charges of aggravated assault, armed robbery, possession of a firearm with intent to commit certain crimes, and finally, unlawful entry into a vehicle. All of which allegedly, according to the Gwinnett County PD, went something like this. At around 12 o'clock in the afternoon, Alex, aka Glock, would post on a Snapchat story asking who was in the area and wanting to do a fan meetup. To which our alleged victim, who we'll call Timmy, replied saying he was in the area and wanting to meet his favorite rapper. And luckily enough, Glock would reply telling the lucky fan that he had won the meetup. And he would next ask the fan to send his location, to which the fan would reply saying that they could meet at a local Quick Trip gas station located at 2900 Buford Drive. So then both parties would leave heading for the gas station and Timmy would actually even end up picking up another friend who will call Jimmy so that they could meet their favorite rapper together. And when Timmy and Jimmy got to the gas station, Glock would actually call them and decide to move the fan meetup next door over to an empty parking lot of a storage facility to which the excited fans would agree. And as they pulled up into the empty parking lot and parked their car, two men being both Glock and one unnamed perpetrator would sneak into the back seats of their car and hold the two fans at gunpoint 
demanding them to give them all of their money, is what I would say if I had a third grade reading comprehension. If you actually read through this report and use any kind of context clues outside of what's just on the paper, it's extremely obvious that these are not fans who were looking forward to meeting their favorite rapper and is instead just plugs who didn't want to admit to the police that they were there to sell. And for some reason, a lot of people who just don't know or don't care how to read just jumped on the narrative that Glock was talking to Jimmy's and Timmy's and inviting them to do meetups and hangouts and then just like robbing them at gunpoint. Which let me get one thing straight, robbing anyone at gunpoint defendable? No. Especially when Glock had pretty much the full focus of the underground on him at the time, it just made like literally zero sense to do this. But also to act like these are just fans is just beyond goofy. But what isn't goofy is the sentence that this could potentially leave Glock with. Due to the case mentioned earlier where Glock was arrested on carjacking and armed robbery charges, for him to then get let out on bail and then reoffend on the same charge less than eight months later is just like an insanely bad look and could potentially leave Glock looking at like a sentence up to 20 plus years if found completely guilty of both armed robbery charges. Due mainly to the strict Georgia law surrounding the conviction, which honestly seems a little insane to me. I don't want this to come off as special treatment for celebrities when I say this, but I really do hope that Glock can beat these charges, because as he stated in quite a few of his recent jail interviews, he does have plans to try to separate himself from the streets of ATL, and moving to a place just out of state like Cali so that he can fully focus on the music and stop getting caught up in this just same constant cycle of crime. But I also would be lying if I said Glock getting locked up didn't help his career at least in the short term, because over the next few months heading into the new year of 2023, Glock's career in Spotify numbers would 6x from 20k monthly listeners on the day of his arrest, all the way to nearly 120 20,000 before the end of the year, which was partly thanks to the rumor circulating around that Glock was joining Playboy Cardi's collective, Opium, which was originally teased on Glock's IG story with him posting a screenshot of Opium's ANR, Jay, also known as Opium Baby, reaching out to Glock, funnily enough in the same way that he reached out to Loan, which was then a few months later followed up by Jay tweeting out and teasing his signing even further, pretty much making everyone sure that Glock had officially signed a soul over to the gay vamps. But then only a few days later, Glock would go live on IG with his girl behind the camera talking to him about the Opium signee rumors, which Glock would pretty much officially shut down on camera along with Homicide Bino even replying to the previously mentioned Opium Baby tweet, calling him out for saying just pretty much anything. And it's really no secret or surprise that Glock isn't a fan of Cardi's, having directly dissed him in previous songs released even before Jay reached out to Glock. Which this is probably going to be the most confusing part of the video, so let's just slowly go over the storylines. Starting with the first storyline, being that Glock doesn't fuck with Cardi because of Cardi's notorious beef with a man known as Ola Runtz, who's a member of an ATL called The Henchman, which without diving too deep into the weeds has some serious issues with the group Cardi associates with being Homicide Gang. And one theory is that Glock doesn't fuck with Cardi due to having some type of unknown connection with Ola Runtz. With Glock having shouted out Ola on IG Live before and even liked quite a few of his older IG posts, but the counter to this theory is that Glock actually has no connection to Ola or Henchman like whatsoever, and in reality is just trying to troll Homicide Bino and Wanna due to them having some kind of personal beef over a chick that happened a little bit before the opium rumors. which also holds water because of the countless amount of personal trolling Glock has done towards Homicide, with his friends even going as far as to diss R5, which is sadly a deceased Homicide member. But at the end of the day, we're all on the internet, so we really don't know shit. And I personally think that either way, Glock signing to Opium would have been a pretty bad thing in the long run. Because although it would have been good in the short term for Glock to sign to Cardi and probably would have given him a massive spike in listeners for a minute, I think that looking at it full picture wise, Glock really wouldn't have been able to capitalize fully on the hype while being incarcerated. And plus, as we all know, when you sign under an artist label, no matter who it is, you will always by default be bottlenecking your career a little bit and will almost always have to fight to get out of certain boxes, which you'll always get put into. Which wouldn't be a problem for Glock because only a few weeks after the opium controversy, he would end up announcing his official decision to sign to a pretty well-known record label, being Columbia Records, which would end up being the label in charge of all Glock's releases going forward and would help Glock from behind bars to reach some of his biggest achievements yet, with Glock arguably being one of the most consistent artists in the scene while pretty much not even being able to touch a mic, with Glock releasing pre-recorded music videos, vaulted singles, and even a full 14-track compilation tape which released with some of Glock's biggest SoundCloud hits and pretty much just like moved him over onto streaming platforms, which would help expose a lot of Glock's newer fan base to some true gems while at the same time getting his fans Fan base ready for his next full length release, which would end up coming out with almost little to no announcement prior on September 8th of 2023 and would be titled as Took the Biggest Risk, which would, despite not even having a proper release date or any promo, go on to chart in the top 25 rap albums of the week. 
leaving us where Glock is today, having arguably some of the most potential in the whole scene, but not being able to realize it due to the situation. And although I am pretty hyped for this next Osama collab tape and other projects, truth is Glock won't really be able to realize his potential until he gets out. So with that said, it goes without saying, but obviously, free Glock. Video over.